six. Take six. <laughs> we should check on what episode it is. Yeah, I'm gonna go with. I think 90. 89 slash 90. Yeah, okay, that sounds okay. good. Episode 89 slash 90 of the Night of Fibers Knitting Crafting Podcast. Yeah. Yeah, this is my mom, Brenda. And this is my daughter, Rachel. And uh, a lot of stuff has happened <laughs> since we last recorded. And yes. as we said, it's been a lot of trying to get through the intro. <laughs> the intro is not working, so we're going to leave life stuff at to the, the end. end because I think right now mentally if we just focus on knitting and crafting and crafting we'll be able to do the episode <laughs> if we try to talk about everything that's happened it's gonna be a rocky start, rocky start. Uh, it'll be a sad start yeah. you won't want to stick around and so if you yeah. um, want to hear about life please watch till the end if you just <laughs> want to watch crafting we're here for you yes okay. Okay, um, today is Sunday, November 27th, 2022, the mm -hmm. very first Sunday of Advent. Yeah. Um, we are coming to you from Southeast Texas, where it is a gorgeous day outside. It's in the it 60s. Is. Yep. Um, my husband is outside putting up Christmas lights, mowing the yard, so yep. if you hear a mower in the yep. background, I sincerely apologize. Mm -hmm. It happens. Life yeah. happens. When people yeah. have their day off, you can't dictate what they need to get done yep, when, very so true, very we're true. going with it, <laughs> and it's a lot less noisy than it was five minutes ago. Very true. So we're going to go with that. <laughs> um, down below in the description bar, you will see Instagram links for my account and your account, mm -hmm. and then you will see my website because I'm the dyer behind Night All Fibers. There's a puppy at the door. Come here. She doesn't just, like them here. Or just stop stretching <laughs> on the wall. <laughs> um, that would be a little Lola the Schnauzer. And now we she came. We do not do show notes. So if mm -hmm. we say something and you want more clarification or don't remember what we said or whatever, just comment below. We love commenting yes. with all of you, interacting that way. Mm -hmm. If you are new to the podcast, welcome. Please consider subscribing, yep. give a thumbs up, hit the bell notification, do all the mm -hmm. YouTube stuff. If yep. you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for being here with us. We truly, truly appreciate each and every one of you. Yep. We are so close to hitting 1,000 subscribers, and as soon as we do, we plan to have a big giveaway. So spread the word. Yes. We would love to have more people in our little community here. Yeah, we definitely do. Yep. Um, <laughs> you'll see a couple of puppies throughout the episode. Yes. I am love sure our of it. <laughs> um, so... Okay, oh, so I think we got through the intro. I grabbed Yay. all of my work in progresses, but I didn't grab any finished objects. Do you have finished objects? I think I have one finished. Okay. I don't remember what I finished last episode, <laughs> and so I don't know what was finished prior to this or not. Yeah, it's we're yeah. a hot mess today, so, and it's been a while, so... If I missed anything, I'll show it on the next episode of Finished Objects, but right now I'll just say no finished objects for Rachel. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that works. Um, do you have anything finished? I do. I am wearing my... One of them. This is the Lonely Skein. Is awesome. that right? It's the, the Lone, Lone Skein by Hohi Locatelli. And you blocked it and so you I can finally it. see the stitch and the style, like the... I will let Rachel zoom in. fun things that you've got um, to do with the stitches. Yeah. This is Abby's yarn, and it is from Red Stag Fibers. Mm -hmm. uh, one of his workers, part-time workers, their daughter found out she has leukemia. So this was a skein of yarn dyed mm -hmm. every skein... Every, the proceeds from the skeins were going to that $10. particular family. Ten dollars from every skein was going yeah. to that family to cover medical okay, costs. Okay, so not the full proceeds, so, just ten dollars. Gotcha. Yes, yes. So I found this off one Saturday when we went to meet up with mm -hmm. a lovely um, friend mm -hmm. to have coffee and knit. Yep. And I was not able. I had two grams left. And it was supposed to have a pico bind off per the pattern. Yes. So and tassels, obviously. I didn't have yeah. enough to do that. In fact, I had to cut off the last two rows. So it's two rows shy of the right. body of the right. shawl. Yes. 
this is my start. Do you see how it does this little... It's a little, like, slope. It's, curve. And... It's weird. It's yeah. just, it sits up kind of high. It's like know. you knit an extra row or two there. I didn't, though. I followed yeah. it. Huh. There might be some mistakes in the lace stuff, but no one's not ever going to see that. Not at the cast on. Not at the cast on. So, yeah. Okay. That's what I was wearing. Um, I'm not going to mess with putting it back on, but it's very lovely. It's very soft. It's very squishy. I love how it turned out. Um, my second finished object, I was way up here. And by the, the progress keeper, you can see that I was working on these at Halloween. And they were cuffed down. So you had just started the second one. Yes. And you Is got a lot better? done. I did, yes. So I finished both yeah. pairs. This is Rachel's TBBT colorway from October. Mm -hmm. This was, I'm not crazy, my mother had me tested. Mm -hmm. Is our lighting not, are we? Um, we need more light from, be, from there. That's better. Okay. I think that's better. So I used a, an opal, an opal um, solid mm -hmm. and they are done. So yeah, I think the last time we podcast was before Halloween. Yeah, I think And then so. we had Reformation Sunday in church, where we stayed after church and played mm -hmm. bingo, and I won a, a tumbler. tumbler, which I've been using nonstop. Yeah. I love it. Um, yeah, won some candy, won a yeah. tea towel. We had a lot of fun. I should have brought my knitting. I'm not very good at bingo. <laughs> it, it's hearing what they're calling out, and then mm. I, I just don't do great with it. Yeah. They it, were very clear. It's just me. It's a me thing. Yeah. Well, to be honest, it was after a long church service, and then we had potluck. Yeah. And we didn't bring anything for potluck, so it was trying to figure out, is this gluten-free? Is this safe to eat? What can we eat? Next time, yeah. we're going to bring a dish Yeah. that we know we can have. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to eat something. And then, like we said, play bingo and get to know some other people in the church a little bit better. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. Really had a good time. Yeah. So those are my two finished, finished objects. I'll show you another one in works in progress. The one pair I suspect I finished since the last episode would be my um, Christmas 2022, which is my colorway yeah. that I came out for this year for Christmas, mm -hmm. Night on Fiber colorway. Mm -hmm. And they're in a bag over there because I'm taking them with me next weekend. Oh, yeah. For I'm doing a mm. Christmas event. Open house. Open house at yep. McKinney Knittery, which is in McKinney, Texas. So we'll nice. be spending an overnight up in the McKinney um, area. McKinney area. And I'm really looking forward to getting to go. I've been dyeing up a ton of yarn for it. Yeah. So I'm super excited. But they're packed away in a bag because if I don't pack a week in advance, <laughs> I will forget to pack the samples. Um, yeah. They had progress keepers on them last night, and I was like, why do they still have the snowman progress keepers on? <laughs> and now that we're podcasting, I realize I probably was going to show them on this episode. Um, so, so if you want to see what they look like, you can watch the previous episode because she's been working on them yeah. for a while. And I might show them on the next episode if I haven't finished anything by the next episode yeah um yeah so so are we ready to do stitch I by stitch i think we're ready to do stitch by stitch okay. i have no i have one two three four there's a lot and i may have seven or eight things okay there's spinning there's knitting and there is crocheting yeah. my little tv tray is overflowing <laughs> i'm gonna have to pick off of the top and um, carefully, I'll add on to not a part of um, a recent finished object, but one that was a couple years ago. Are these fingerless mittens by Tin Can Knits with the pretty cable? It is a worsted weight, and so I've been wearing these almost every evening that it's been cold. You have, and I like them quite a bit. Yeah. Oh, and on the back side, it's just stocking knit. Do you remember what yarn it was? It was a Madeline Tosh colorway. I can't remember what color it was. And I know it was a tin can knit pattern. Is anyone Christmas knitting? Christmas I think, presents? I think now is the perfect time to Christmas knit. You've got Christmas if you're, bags. If you're crazy like me, you decide at the very last minute, oh, I'm going to do this for this person and this for this person. And you're like, how many days until Christmas? Uh. 
I think you're actually in the majority there. I think a lot of people end up doing that. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is a brand new bag that was gifted to me by Ibble Dibble Jackie Designs. And she has an Instagram page at Ibble Dibble Ibble Dabble Jackie Designs. I don't know if I'm saying that right or not, but um, nice Instagram yeah. page that she just started. Yes, um, I got this, and I, I have something else I'll show you when I do acquisitions. But I am knitting a pattern by Rose Opal Knits. Oh, that's I'll the right it, pattern. I'll put a picture in. Do you remember what it's called? Oh, oh I have it down here. Okay. <laughs> in the printer. I'll put a picture on. I really will find the pictures this time and add them in. <laughs> Almost Basic Cowl by Erica Saint. And yeah. this is a cowl that she designed for her husband, I believe. And, ooh, I have to move my progress keeper up. I made this little progress keeper. It's mm -hmm. a little... Uh, it's a little gingerbread woman. Can you see it? There it is. I am using Red Stag fiber or Red Stag yarns mm -hmm. in the. Here's his tag. That you dropped. Butterfingers. There's his tag. And this is Stonegate, is the colorway. So a basic charcoal. Yeah, it's really pretty. And it is a state Aaron weight. And it's 100% superwash merino, 181 yards for 100 grams, and it is so soft and squishy. And as you can see, I have a long way to go. I think I have to get to 8 inches or something like that um, before I do the top ribbing. And this is a cowl that has uh, some ribbing on mm -hmm. the sides. Our lighting is not good. There you go. And <laughs> that's better, I think. You okay? I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> okay, there's some ribbing on the sides. So I have, I put progress keepers in, or little, not progress keepers, little stitch, uh, markers, stitch markers in. Um, and I am using. I did not have the right size. I'm using US 9. And I did not have the right, um, I didn't have a 9 that I wanted to use. For that circumference. For that circumference. So I went on Amazon and I just ordered the cheapest one I could find. It has a pink cable that looks like chow goo, but it's pink. Mm -hmm. But it's that type of thing. And then it's got the bend in the right yeah. here. Yeah, I'm not a fan they of were the only bend, but... But you know what? They're working. Yeah. The only complaint I would have is the tip is a little... Um, gritty? Yeah, it's a little gritty. It's kind of... Mm -hmm. I have to be careful when I so I don't split the yarn. But <laughs> anyway, I'm making this for my husband for Christmas, and I am housing it in this beautiful project bag that I really love. Mm -hmm. And it's very here cheerful. you go. There it is. Awesome. There you go. So... That is the first thing that I'm working on, and I feel like this episode should be titled Squirrel, because yeah. we are all over the place. Turning off lights and with, tripping on your own boots. With the, uh, yeah. I need to find which pattern that goes in. Project. Project then, that goes in. Um, it's yeah. a reflection of our state of mind. <laughs> it's just, well, and with yeah. my crafting lately, I've just been, ooh, I want to do this, Oh, I want to do that now, and I'm just like yeah. all over the place, and it's just. Ah. I can kind of relate to that. I actually did feel like casting something on, maybe a week after our last podcast. So that's when everything was relatively calm. I just really wanted to cast on, and I had this skein of focus. Malia made it, which I've never knit with um, yarn from this dyer before. A white Christmas self-striping advent is the colorway and believe it doesn't say what year but I think we bought it the first year we moved out here had it for a while <laughs> we were gonna split it and then you decided no I'm fine you can knit it knit them as long as you want yeah it came with a mini skein 
So a very, very bright, bright turquoise. I think our lighting's better now that I turned off the floor so. lamp. I do not have stitch markers on these yet, so but you can take your progress papers. Yes, I can. Didn't it come with stitch so, markers though? Not to my knowledge. I, yeah, it did, and I think I know where they are. Okay, so this is not the full repeat yet. You can see some of the darker colors have little light bits in them. Not like intentionally kept white or anything, but just like tonal. Tonal, yeah. Tonality it's very to it. Yeah. Um, I think there's it's a 12 stripe repeat from what I could tell by counting and trying to peek in the cake what color is coming next. Mm -hmm. And the stripes are two, four, six, six rounds per stripe. And I do get a little bored when they're that, that long because I'm used to four stripes or four rows per stripe. So I'm happy with these, but I do have to say when I cast them on, like, and you're just looking at that bit, it's Easter. <laughs> oh, and yeah. It, it's it's yeah. Easter, right? That's Easter starting. Easter. Yeah. And then when you see this bit, it's more Christmas. So yeah. um, I think that when we watch the movie, I'll catch on to what the colors yes. represent. It's yes. just that yeah. we only watch the movie on Christmas. Yeah. And Christmas so, Eve or Christmas yeah, Day, whenever we... I thought about watching it early and then watching it again, and I'm like, mm, I don't... I'm just I, going with it. I think she did a great job with the colors. Yeah. And this is another bag by Jackie. She gifted me some bags as well when we met up. And it's very cute. There's a pocket on the inside out of the same fabric. And it's got a little ring on the outside. Her quality is so, so exceptional. Really um, good quality bags. Yep. So this yep. is being housed in there. I had to use the bag right away. Yeah. I'm going to put the ball band back in <laughs> and the mini skein because yeah. I, I will lose everything. I, I will. <laughs> That's why we have bags is to keep everything together. So we had to run to Walmart the other night as you do, you know, to pick up a few things, and it's like, oh, I want to go through the craft section, mm -hmm. as I always do, and I found a skein of Red Heart, and I think it is Mistletoe, just one lonely skein and sitting there, and I thought, basic Christmas colors, I need some Christmas Hot Pot pads, so here's one, look at how that's striped, it's very that pretty, fun. I like the white dashes in it, yeah, I cast on 75 for this one, and this one I cast on 80. And so okay. you just cast on and crochet chain, a tube. You chain stitch, and then you join in the round, being careful not to twist it. And I do single crochet through one loop on the first round. Mm -hmm. And then when I go through the second time, I go through both loops and single crochet. And then when you get to, this is how you fold them over. Yep. You fold it so that it makes a seam. And when? Well, that would be seamed up. Yeah. And so I've got, on this side, you I've got a little way, to, I have to keep knitting or crocheting, crocheting until, that until the is sides, closed up. until the sides meet. Mm -hmm. So, and then you just get, very simple. And I am using a furls. E hook. It's a 3.5 millimeter. Nice. So I love my furls hooks. Okay. So that is one crochet project that just suddenly hopped Hop on down. to the rotation the and onto the hook. So yeah, yeah I, when I have, I don't think I'll have enough to do three hot pot pads. But you'll definitely get two. I might do some granny squares to use up the yarn and use them as coasters because I think that'd be, be really festive. So yeah, yeah that's. Or even just to set candles like on. Ooh, yes, so set candles on. Hot on the bottom. Yep. Okay. So that is so. Another thing they're working on. Um, I cast on the current Big Bang Theory uh -huh. color way, which is friendship configuration. So here is the cake of yarn. It, if you notice, it's one cake, not two. I did this one at a time, toe up. And so I have my team toe up on there. Why is it that you did it that way? Very, very lazy. Yeah. So. Um, uh, that's what it was. You were lazy. I was lazy. <laughs> um, but I did put a pattern on. So I really like how this 
looks. Please focus. Focus. Thank you. <laughs> this is the Avenue Sock. Avenue Socks by Mina Phillip Knitting Expat and it is an umbrella toe. And so that is the pattern side. And here you can see the stocking knit side. Um, yeah, so I really like that the texture adds to the stripes very easily. And the thing about the pattern is that you can choose um, stacked or um, alternating, kind of. And then you can also pick how often you do the um, fancy stitch row versus the rest rows. So I am doing the stacked, not staggered, but the stacked version. And I'm also doing the four row repeat of it. So it's an old pattern that we had in our knitting binder. Yep. And it's actually turning out really nice. Um, it's fun to go looking and seeing all the different things that you print off and buy and then forget to knit. <laughs> or never get around <laughs> to knitting. Or never get around to knitting. Yeah. I think that's when she was coming out with so many patterns so quickly and I honestly I'm really bad. I don't keep up with her stuff mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. But that was back when we I was keeping up with her sock yeah. patterns. Yeah. So I'm I'm sure she still designs lots of sock patterns. Yeah. But this is just the one that we had. Okay, in a little bag that I made a couple years ago, I have the Gilmore Girls. I get to do Gilmore Girls this time. Yeah. And this is Snowman Building Competition, or Contest? What is it? A contest. Okay. And this is all I have done. <laughs> That's all I've got done. The camera's not focusing. Focus. There we go. So... I just put a snowman progress keeper on it. I want to get through all the colors in the repeat before I do mm -hmm. um, work on the leg. But yeah, 64 stitches, US 1, 2.25 millimeter. And yeah, mm -hmm. I think this is going to be really fun. I'm doing from the outside of the cake this time. Yeah. Because when I see how it twists up on itself, like this. Yeah. That's why I'm pulling from the outside this time, it's so it won't do that as much. much. So it won't do it as, as bad. I'm pulling from the inside. But I haven't had much time to work on this. Both of these colorways are available in Rachel's shop. Until the 15th of January. January. No. No. December. December. The 15th of December. December. And then they would ship on the 20th of December. Mm -hmm. So... I uh, need to get a post on Instagram so that yes. more people can yes. see what they look like. And that's the very last yeah. TBBT colorway that mm -hmm. you're doing. Gilmore yeah. Girls, you said, will continue. Yeah, it will. It definitely mm -hmm. will. Um, and then I'll probably just create colorways alongside the Gilmore Girl that I'll release on the first of each month that are just inspired by whatever I'm in the mood to do. Yeah, might be a fandom thing. It might just be something nature or a book. There you go. We'll just see. Yeah. Okay. Um, I One, have... Two, three, four. I have four more things. So do I. I have okay. Four more things. Keeping with socks, I am knitting this... Okay. What's the pattern? Because I know pattern. you're putting a pattern on it. I am putting a pattern on it. And this one I have to really... Scatter by socks by a Amy Stringer. Okay. And it is a free pattern. Very fun. I love those free patterns. Mm -hmm. Especially um, when it's a textured sock one. And here it is. Isn't that fun? Yeah, that is a lot of fun. Right? I did one full repeat of the colorway. And this is Who Spiked the Eggnog by Rachel. Night Owl Fibers. And I am working on the pad pattern. And mm -hmm. I really love the way it looks. And yours is a, a more um, intense texture than what I'm doing. Yes. And yeah. it's a very fun texture to be doing. It is. But I really have to... There's no rest row. So I really have to make sure that I'm focusing when I do this. Otherwise, I will make mistakes. And it's being housed in my project bag by Hugh Loco. Isn't very that fun. a cute bag? I love this that one. Is. 
I switched all my stuff from my fall themed bags over to my Christmas bags. Very nice. Okay. What else do you have, Miss Rachel? I am working very slowly on these. I, I did pull it out and work on it recently, but it was like a new cast on and then life. But this is the journey sock that I did. I don't have it on a sock blocker this time. I had this one done for mm -hmm. a while. You did, yeah. So I don't know why I put the teacup on it. I think I just put progress keepers on here so I wouldn't lose them and I didn't have a tin near me. This one's got a cannoli on it, and I am working on the stocking nut portion. I'm about one stripe away from working on the toe, yeah. and then this will be done. This was um, Festival of Living Art, which was a Gilmore Girl inspired colorway by Nidal Fibers, which is mm -hmm. me, and it will be re-released next year. It was a club one this year. Yeah. So... Uh, we'll fun, set those fun. down there. Um, you should have been working on that last night when we were watching Cake Boss. I know. It would have been done if I did. I said, they're making cannolis. I think it's... I'm avoiding doing the toe. Oh. I why? I, then you're done. I know. I just... I want just plain stocking it. I don't even want to think about anything. <laughs> I, I just... I don't want to think. Uh, um, okay. Um, in another little bag. Made by me is my Beats Bears Battlestar Galactica. No. Yes, uh, that's right. Beats that's Bears. Right. Battlestar Galactica. That's right. That's what we call it. That's what we call it. Yeah. But on the show, it's Bears Beats Battlestar Galactica. Because yeah. Bears eat beets. Mm hmm And Battlestar Galactica. But yep. this is beats bears Battlestar Galactica. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I had to get out a little progress keeper from Lock and Lou. It is a little bear. A very cute little black bear. And I am doing uh, the Prairie Socks by Kay Jones on these. Mm -hmm. So I did one full repeat again of the cuff, uh, ribbing cuff. And I am working on these very slowly, so now I can move up my progress keeper. Awesome. Socks have not been getting a lot of love lately. Mm. Other things have been... Getting knitted on. Or crocheted on. Or crocheted on. That's all I have for socks. Yay. I have one more sock project, but I'm going to talk about my blanket knitting first. I do. I have one. Oh, yeah, yeah. I do have one more. <laughs> <laughs> one more sock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I okay. do have one more sock, but I haven't knit on that at all, so okay. that one's just cuff. This is my current section of the alignment throw. I am still on strip one. So, three down. I believe that the progress keeper was moved from the last time, and I knit a good portion on it. I think I'm ready to start doing where I start, have to start working with the white and the, the blue again, the antarja. Again, not just plain knitting anymore. So therefore, it didn't keep. <laughs> it just got set back down. Um, yeah, so it is being housed in a tiny little bag. That's ah, orange. Halloween bag. I have some Christmas ones down below. Oh, okay. That I need to grab. I have made this much progress on my granny stripe blanket. Awesome. So that's what about two, three inches? What would you say? How many inches? Um, <laughs> I'm dropping everything today. It's about two, two and, and, a, and half. a half inches. Two and of a half progress. inches. So I finished off one little cake of yarn that I had, and I got to choose the next one. And so I have this ginormous magic knot cake that I'm working on. And what size hook am I using on this? I don't know, because it's in my other basket. Okay. But, yes. This has been... I've been doing a lot of crochet lately. Yeah. You know, I've also been enjoying that because it's, I think, cooler in the evening. Yeah, like, something to have on my it's lap. It's actually cold for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, I've just been feeling like blanket making lately. That's nice. Yeah, lots of blankets in my in my works here. 
Okay. Well, this is actually in a fall bag. So that's But at now least is that. when we get our fall color it here is. in Texas. Yeah. Uh, this is the Autumn Dreams colorway, which does not look as good on camera. That's all right. I don't think anything looks very good on our camera today because it's just our lighting is it's weird. Possible. It, it's been overcast outside when we started. It wasn't overcast, but it was just lighting. Anyway, I was down here. Focus, please. I was down here. <laughs> so I knit a good bit. I knit my OMG heels. I am um, four, one, two, three, four, and I have five, five stripes past the heel. So it's going really well. I got a lot on these done, but we decorated the house the day after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I tried working on these that evening and I, I still did work on them. I got stuff done, but it just felt wrong. These are so <laughs> autonomous <laughs> and everything is Christmas and yeah. lights yeah. and ornaments and it just didn't feel like I was doing it in the right season so yeah I'll probably yeah. go another four stripes on the leg and then maybe 20 rows of ribbing yeah. on each and then these will be done so you those threw are up my... your ornaments on the tree really fast and you're like I'm done yeah. I'm so done I'm just gonna sit down and knit I'm done and Rebecca had a lot to do, and then was like, Mom, aren't you putting yours yeah. on? So then I had to put my ornaments on. You were trying to pawn off your ornaments on me. I was, and, and you weren't I'm having not, it. I, I have to fight for the tree real estate with my sister. She has <laughs> more ornaments than me, and she only gets a t she like, <laughs> somehow always gets to the tree two minutes before me, and within that time, she has everything on the front, so mm. I get the sides and the back, and so I'm like... Yeah. They're on. They're high enough away for puppies and yeah, for it to be safe. I'm yeah. like, your ornaments, your choice where they go. Yep. <laughs> they get knocked down. I'm, I'm yep. out. Yep. I do like Christmas. I'm. I'm not trying to be bah humbug. I was just tired. <laughs> She's from, so tired from cooking and then eating too much sugar. And that's what it was. It, it had was pie. Too much it was sugar. too much sugar, and you were just like, oh, yeah, I'm tired. Yeah. Okay in another bag made by me. I started the Jelly Roll Blanket. I had two little, actually I had three, um, little opal, opal minis that I got when I ordered yarn from Anna. And I have my Christmas in July advent calendar from her that I have been saving since June when it came in the mail. So I was pondering what do I want to do with these little minis. I want to make something very special. I don't want to just throw them in my blanket and... With all your other stuff. With all my other stuff. With all my other scraps. I wanted to have something that was just these that I get from her. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, I've never done a jelly roll. I want to do a jelly roll. So... say who the pattern was by? It's by Kay it. Jones. It's by Kay Jones. And it's on 2.75 needles, so I got out some double points. These are knit, Knitter's Pride, Knitter, Knit Pro Zing, whatever. And this is what the first one did. And then I mm -hmm. thought, I want to do something that's going to break, break up. up the because opal color because the color repeats are so all the size pretty. mini so they're all going to end and start at the exact same point unless you stagger it in some way. Right and a true jelly roll is staggered and yeah. so we were looking in our little ottoman that I stash yarn in and I had a blue and a gray solid opal. I have like three of each and so I thought okay those will be nice neutral colors to throw in here. And so I just attached the blue and I'll knit for however long I feel. And then I will start with this purple one next. And then on the 1st of uh, December, I'll start opening my opals, the advent calendar. Mm -hmm. And I can decide, you know, just grab one, whatever I feel. I want to knit up next and see how it knits up and just keep going with jelly roll. So awesome. this one will take me a while. It's going to be a long-term project, which I'm perfectly happy with. Yeah. So I, you're not going to like kill yourself and go crazy with trying to keep up with. No. 
each day. Doing it in December. No, 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 no. Because this is, it took me quite a while to get this first 10 gram mini done. Um, but it's so pretty. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to enjoy the process, enjoy going back and forth because this is one that's easy to pick up and put down. It's, you know, 20 stitches across, 20 stitches back, and it's just garter. You know, if I am cooking something and I've got to go check something in the kitchen, just set it down mm -hmm. and no big deal. So to start with, I have it in this little bag. Awesome. And I've got a blanket basket that I've got everything in, so yeah. um, that'll be... I just kind of stored it in there. But, okay. Yeah. So I have two more things to talk about. And so my final knitted thing is the sweater, The Birch Pullover by Andrea Mowry. And I'm still on the body, but there's a lot more body there. There is. I did move the progress keeper, so this, a lot of this was knit within three weeks. I should say two and a half weeks. I was really motivated the first week after recording. Yeah. And then I kind of fell off of it. And then I measured it, got kind of excited again, and I was like, well, let's pull out a sweater I really like the body of. Mm hmm which is the Meadow Moon by... <laughs> I test knit this. I should know it. The Meadow Moon by Jennifer Steingast. Jennifer Steingast. Thank you. <laughs> I really like the length of this, how it hits my um, waist and my where the jeans sit and everything. Mm -hmm. So I think it was a total of four more inches to go for this body of the Birch Pullover. To be the same size as your Jennifer Steingast one. Yeah, to be the same size. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I find that a little more reliable instead of tugging at the fabric to make it yeah. longer when you measure. Yeah. It's to hold it against a sweater you really do like. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing okay on it until two weeks ago. And then I don't think I really worked on it in the past two weeks. Yeah. So it's like, I could actually get this done. I, I, could, I was really motivated. And yeah. I think it's just life happens. I, I don't want to think about anything but stocking it. That that tends yeah. to be the theme with all my projects. Yeah, life happened. And um, this is pretty easy, but I will move the progress keepers. I even had in my little daily trackers and my planner, like knit on sweater, and I was checking it off, and I was doing it, and I was getting a couple V's a day, mm -hmm. and I was I was sticking to what I had said last episode for yeah. two weeks. I'll just go with, I did it for two weeks. Yep. But, fun to pull out a sweater you really like. And, like, like the fit of and everything. Mm -hmm. I recommend that. That's a really good idea. Okay. I have one last thing, and it's another crochet thing. Mm -hmm. So, I'm part of Anna Knitter's, um, like it's like a knitting book, club. Knitting club. It's like a book club, but it's for knitting. Mm -hmm. And the prompt this month, for the month of November, mm -hmm. was... How many squares can you make? And it's for anybody to be a part of it, but it's um housed on the what um, app? Telegram. Telegram app. Yep. She has a club there on Telegram. That's where we such mm -hmm. lovely people there. So I had a granny or a granny square blanket that I started in 2017 with row one minis. Mm -hmm. And I dug it out and I thought this is the perfect mm -hmm. time to keep going on it. I had 20 squares done and I tried and I didn't have my hook in the basket anymore so I was like what hook was I using and I was using cream to go around them and I attached 10 new squares and it just was not I didn't couldn't remember how I joined them I couldn't remember mm -hmm. I had to get a book out and look at how to make a granny square again because it's been that long since I've worked on this project. And there were ends hanging in the back, tons and tons of ends. I think we had, we tried pulling up an old podcast episode and I was like, okay, based on here and here, I think you cast it on here and I found the episode you talked yeah. about it and you gave no details. None. <laughs> None. Was, other than they were row one minis. Yep. 
But yep. not on how you were attaching nope. or the hook size. Nope. Nothing. Or any of the deep... The, nothing there. Nothing. Um, so Rachel and I frogged. But we do know it was two years ago. Yeah. So I, I had 30 squares all attached. And I'm like, I'm not liking this. It's it's looking sloppy. It's not looking neat. Yeah. We frogged it. We sat there one evening and frogged. And here are the first two months. Yep. Kinky and everything. The yarn is all kinky because it's, it's ramen noodles. Yeah, it's ramen noodles. Okay, so here is what I did. I started over. And you wrote down very clearly what you were doing I in your did. Um, journal. I wrote down really, really clear instructions. In your crafting journal. What I'm doing. And there's my little gingerbread house. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have 10 done, connected. Yep. Then I got 10 more ready to go, ready to be joined together, yep. and then ready to be joined to the blanket. And I am so much happier with the result, the size of them, the tension I'm keeping. I have no idea what the dyer's name is for this one. I'm not writing it that down. I'm just writing down how I do the granny squares, how I join them. Um, yeah. What size hook I'm using. What the white yarn is on the outside. All yes. of that information. And the white yarn is what I had in stash. It's Baby Bernat Sport. Mm -hmm. And back in 2020, I had um, Halloween Advent and a Christmas Advent. And I did the Bits and Bobs blanket holding the fingering weight double with the sport weight. Yep. And it worked out beautifully. So we've had like that white yarn for a long time. A couple time. balls of it in the house for a long, long time. time. So it's getting used. I am holding the minis double. They are 10 gram minis, so I'm holding them double. And I'm getting very nice squares. Yep. So I like them better with the white. Mm -hmm. So now I just need to sit down one of these evenings, join those 10 together, join them to the, the blanket and then start making more squares. And I have not decided if I'm going to just use the ramen noodle yarn or if I'm going to soak it, hang it up, and let it get nice. You mean nice re-skein it. Re so you it. can't soak it in a little ball. We no, no, no. Re-skein it. Re-skein it. Soak, soak it. it. Hang it up, and yeah. then work with it again. I think I might be happier mm -hmm. with the result. I just haven't yeah. gotten to that yet. But I have nine when um, row one bags yeah and then I have leftover from two years ago advent calendar so I'm gonna make that my t my tenth so it'll be yeah. ten squares by ten squares that'll be nice and then I'll go around it uh, the border and make a nice border so Abby yeah three blankets on the needles or hooks right now and yeah it's not just socks that I do which is what it was starting to feel like. Oh, hello, Kirby. Mm -hmm. Here's Kirby. Hi, okay, Kirby. so okay. I'll quickly talk about my last project. And it is a project that I haven't touched since maybe 2016, 2017. Yeah. And it is my mm -hmm. Turkish spindle. And the outer bits right here I just did today. And everything else was done a while ago. Many so. years ago. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get it to focus. It doesn't like me very much right now. Happy. No. There we go. That's pretty. That's it. So you can see it's a lot of purples right now. And I haven't even done half of a first four ounce braid. This is the other half of a four ounce braid. Do you know if it's Merino, Polworth, Corydell? I'm pretty sure it's Merino. Merino. You can see a lot oh, that's of really oranges. That's really pretty. Very, very bright. I have a tag in here for the second braid because I bought two four ounce braids. Thinking, I can make something big with this. Have I ever. I can make a sweater. Have I ever knit with my hands <laughs> one? Once. Um, anyway, so it is. Gritty Knits, and it is Ashburton mm -hmm. Merino. Ashburton is the colorway, and Merino, yeah, the fiber. And I'm pretty sure it would be non-superwash, because it would have been stated if it was. 
I have spun Rolex and I have spun fiber before. On a drop spindle. On a drop spindle and I've spun on a Turkish spindle. I what do you used, prefer? I used your uh, spinning wheel mm -hmm. once. Yeah. I just made little nuggets out of the half of the braid. And here is the full braid. I enjoyed spinning roll eggs, but I just don't feel like they're... I don't know what I'm trying to say as like effective because you have to get a lot of them to actually get a decent amount of fiber. Yeah. But what do you do, enjoy spinning on more? Your drop spindle or your Turkish spindle? Turkish spindle. Really? I, I like the Turkish spindle because of the way you get to wind it on. It keeps the weight balanced. Um, and I'm not a super like experienced or fancy spinner. Yeah. When I spin, it cre creates a nice product for me. Mm -hmm. And I tend to gravitate more naturally towards... A fine lace weight. Yeah, you do. For my single ply, and then when you yeah. tie it together, it tends to be like a fingering yeah, weight. A fingering weight to a sport. Yeah. And so I'm gonna have fun just kind of plying and see if I can get half of the first four ounce braid onto here. Mm -hmm. And then maybe there's somebody else watching that's more experienced. Do you think I can pull from the inside and the outside of? This little nugget of what I was saying before the battery died was should I ply from the inside and the outside at this and ply with a reverse twist? Always or, with a reverse twist. But if you're pulling from the inside and the outside, would it still be a reverse twist? I think so. You think so? I think okay. so. Or would I have to spin the other half of the fiber and make another nugget and then spin? Both of those together. Both of those together. I don't know. Because I'd be curious to see it plied yeah. together. Other experienced knitters or, or spinners. spinners. Let us know. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, yeah, so. Okay, we have some other goodies. Okay, so in addition to the Christmas bag that I got from Jackie, she also gave me a book cover. And these are little mm -hmm. cardinals. Yeah. So it's a little book pocket. Yep. You just undo it here and you put your book in there and carry your book around. Mm -hmm. It's so nice. I love it. Very well made again. And what else did you get from her? I got another bag. And That's a nice it's big one. A nice big one and it's got a super fun print on it. One of your and favorite colors. And there's a D-ring right here. And this one, I don't see a pocket in it, but... She's got a nice tag inside, and so this one I might house another sweater project, but I am resisting putting casting <laughs> on another sweater because I know I can get that birch pole over done. Yeah. But this could be like a fun new everything when yeah. I do get to cast on. Yeah, definitely. So okay, I got something in the mail this week. And I saw this on Rose Opal Knits, and I thought, I'm going to go get one myself. So this is Stitched, Cherished Stitch by Ollie. It is a Christmas bag, mm -hmm. and it has the fun candy cane stripes on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, drawstring, and then a wrist, wrist strap. strap. So it's got a nice canvas yeah. bottom. This is going to house another project. Mm -hmm. um, another little Christmas thing I got is Charmed and Dangerous. I got a little gingerbread star. So adorable. Hopefully this will focus. Is it focusing? Maybe you want me to hold it you up? You hold it up. Okay. The lighting, I think, has been affecting the focus. There we go. It's focused. You yeah. can see the cute... Isn't that cute? So that's Charmed and Dangerous. Yeah. She had a sale, so I went and I helped myself yep. to a little fun, little progress keeper. And then today was 
the first Sunday yeah. of Advent, so we got to open our Advent that so we ordered from Holly mm -hmm. Press Fibers. So if you ordered yours and for some reason you're waiting longer than the 27th, you may not want to look, but we're going to talk about ours. Yes, this is out so of, beautiful. Pull them out of the bags. Ready? Yep. Ta-da! It's tea with Mr. Tumnus, and it is a Narnia reference. So we got a 100 gram skein and then a 20 gram mini yeah. with it. It's so it pretty. Is so pretty. Oh my gosh. So this is going to go in my new Christmas bag. Yeah. And I was thinking I could maybe do a fade, a little mm -hmm. fade short sleeve top mm -hmm. with this and some other ones that I have from her. But now I'm thinking, no, this just needs to be socks. Yeah. It'll be really yeah. pretty. So it'll be my advent cast on. Mm -hmm. Those I'm definitely going to be doing two at a time. Are you? Yes, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And we each got okay. our own this time because sometimes we, we split and we share mm -hmm. yarn from her. Yeah. But we were like, it's Christmas. We're getting, we're going to yep. get our own advent. Um. Yep. So I don't think I talked about this last episode. Last episode was right after the trunk show. Mm -hmm. So I think we did it October 23rd. So yeah, I haven't showed this yet. Night Owl Fibers has ball bands now, so instead of the business cards, please focus. There we go. Then on the back we have all the information. All the information. Camera, it's really gotten dimmer in here. It's mm -hmm. not like the information on the back, <laughs> um, but it says the base, the weight, the content, the yardage, the colorway the care instructions, my website, and my email. So that's yeah. the information on the back. And I'm super excited to have these. I was able to send out some wholesale orders with the ball bands on and yep. lots of orders for online. I've been working, I've tried to just work six days a week, but I have been working seven. Yep, you have. Because I've been unwrapping and reskeining and that, those Takes kinds of time. things to get orders out yep. on Mondays. And then I still get orders out throughout the week, but... Okay, that's um, fine. That's right. <laughs> Hand it over. That's mine. Okay. That one came from your personal stash. Yeah, huh? Lion, Witch, and Wardrobe. That's, she yeah. gave this one to me, so, yeah. Yeah, um, so, um, if you have orders that you're waiting on, rest assured I am working as fast as I possibly can. Yeah. I think I've just kind of been throwing myself into work so I don't have to deal with life, life and thinking. Life. So, um, work is getting done. Um, You're a one woman order, show. Orders will be getting yeah. out. I, there's a lot. And then with the um, McKinney trunk show, the Christmas. Yeah, um, this next weekend. This next weekend, there was a lot that was getting prepared for that too. So, but please um, be patient. Your yarn is coming if you order. Yeah. Um, and you wrote down... I wrote down some things that we wanted to talk about. When they say things break in threes, they really do. Yeah. First it was... I know we've talked about this before, but first was the garage door. Mm -hmm. The ginormous spring just snapped one night, and my yeah. husband thought he heard an explosion. It, it was, was the garage door, so we had to replace that. The next thing was the washing machine broke, mm -hmm. so we had to get a new washing machine. And then a week ago, week and, two weeks ago now... I think it was two weeks ago. Okay. I woke up to at five thirty in the morning to this horrible smell mm -hmm. in the house, and I woke my husband up and I said, "Something's not right. You've got to get up and go look." And I had just turned on the heater two nights before. We've been running the AC constantly, and and it got cold here, so it was like down in the thirties, mm -hmm. and so it was like, okay, we need the heat for the night. And the next night, woke up, terrible smell, and there was smoke in the house. So he started getting up in the attic, couldn't find anything mm -hmm. in the attic, looked at the heater, tore the panel off the front, looked up by the the attic opening, and the insulation had started to smolder. Mm -hmm. So we called, called, a, called a technician, he came out and looked mm -hmm. at it and he said, well, if I can even get the parts to fix this part that's broken, it may get you six months, it may need, get you three months, but you've got oil leaking and that's going to start a bigger fire. Mm -hmm. So we had to replace the whole heater. Yeah. Luckily they were able to get us one and have somebody here by seven o'clock the next morning. 
yeah. to put in a new heater. So it's been stressful. And while all that was going on, Rachel discovered a lump on one of mm -hmm. Abby's nipples. I had noticed some abnormalities when I gave her her haircut a month and a half ago, two months ago. Yeah. And we let her hair get longer because of the colder weather coming. Yeah. And yeah, so we she called the noticed vet. it. I noticed it had gotten much larger very fast. Yeah. So I made an appointment that week to take her to the vet because she um, has epilepsy and that's been under control really well and it still is under control. Mm -hmm. But she goes to the vet twice a year, so I was going to mention the tiny little abnorm abnormality. abnormality when we took her in in a month. But I'm like, no, we're taking her in this week. Um, so we got her in and the vet said basically what we thought. And it's breast, breast cancer. cancer. So she is a good candidate for surgery and we had that scheduled. And it will be December 7th mm -hmm. that we take her in. And they're going to spay her. And spay her as well. I didn't have her spayed when she was younger because of the epilepsy. Mm -hmm. um, because... Um, it's harder to put them under anesthesia. Yeah, and the only she's only had one dental done, and that required anesthesia. And that was because it was medically necessary. So, so. we avoid surgeries unless we have to yeah. with her. And she's going to be 10 and, in December. Yeah, so I have was basically just spent and emotionally just yeah, just a wreck for the first week. Yeah, It was actually a wreck a few days before the appointment mm -hmm. because I just did not have a good feeling. But yeah. the vet is very confident that she can get the whole she tumor. She can get it and because we noticed it early mm -hmm. and got her in early that it should be pretty good for and that she did really well last time when she had her dental. Yeah. So the anesthesia should be good for her yeah. and shouldn't hurt her any. And so she... And she might possibly have Cushing's disease. Yeah, because um, just some other symptoms she's been having kind mm -hmm. of point towards that. But so... in order to help pay for the surgery, Rachel mm -hmm. decided to create a mystery self-striping colorway. Mm -hmm. And... All of you have been so overwhelmingly yeah. generous and kind and supportive, mm -hmm. and we just, we cannot thank you enough for all of your support and kind words and thoughts and help. It's been so humbling. Yeah. And, and so great. We're so grateful for and it. People have had similar experiences with their pets, have reached out and said if I need to talk, to contact them, and it's been so... So be, incredible for people to be so kind, and I've... And donate money. Yeah. And not want yarn. <laughs> yeah, it's, it has. And I will um, be getting the colorways uh, out for the Puppy Love colorway, that's what I called it, um, out as soon as I can. Yeah. Um, like I said, I've been working very hard, and I've been spending time with her. And so we'll definitely be giving an update. I We tried talking about this at the beginning of the episodes, and that's why we, we took so many tries to get, <laughs> get the episode right. going. And yes, yeah. that normally happens. We have to take a couple takes to get it yeah. going. Yep. But it just, I, I wanted to talk about it at the beginning of the episode, and I just couldn't because... Like, it's very sad. It's, it's very sad. It's very emotional for you. And I still get very, very upset. Mm -hmm. um, my sister does not know in what to say or do when I get really, really sad about yeah. this. Yeah. And she's a pet lover and she worked in a vet clinic. I mean, she's used to the life and, and death being in a vet clinic. You have so, to have very tough skin to do yeah. that because there's a lot of life and death that and happens. She, she's used to me when like something sad happens, I generally handle and cope with it a little bit better and mm -hmm. I haven't been coping so well with this and so like oh, I'm, I do pretty good so pretty good when I keep my mind busy and off of it but when I talk yeah. about it I get pretty emotional Weepy. yeah yeah so. so it's probably best that we talked about it towards the end I will be trying to put some updates on Instagram as well mm -hmm. I put a cute picture of her on my stories um, after I put up a little Thanksgiving thing. Yeah. 
You've had Abby ever so. since you were 15. Yeah, and so. I'm, I'm 25 now, so she's been with me for a good, um, good stage of my life. Yeah, yeah. And so, she's, she doesn't want me to be weepy. <laughs> she doesn't want you to be weepy, she's smiling. Yeah. Mommy, be happy. Yeah, yeah. so. so. Um, she had lost a little weight, so we've been giving her a little bit more food. Yeah. And she's just very restless lately. Yeah. Um, you can tell she's uncomfortable and not feeling well. So. Yeah. So. Um, thank you again um, to everyone who purchased yeah. Puppy Love Yarn. There is some, mm -hmm. some still available in the shop to purchase mm -hmm. if you would like to. You don't feel obligated. But um, we did have enough orders come in where her surgery is covered and we're definitely going to be able to provide the best care we can for her. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's just, um, you guys love her so much too from all the comments. And yeah, love seeing her on the podcast. Found. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, it's okay, baby. Uh, we've had dogs my whole life, and this is the first one that's had cancer. Yeah. Um, this is the first one we've taken this much. Like, to the vets every six months. Yeah. Like, she yeah. is. All of our other pets have been fairly um, healthy, healthy and never needed to go to the vet except yeah. for immunizations. And, and our that little sort of thing. Chihuahua that passed away earlier this year, we did start taking her towards the end for some medicine to yeah. mom, to yeah. help her with her um, challenges she had at the end. Yeah. Um, but, but normally, like she's just been. Um, our special little baby that she's your special baby. Yeah, you special paid baby. for everything. You paid when you yeah. She paid the fee to to adopt her mm -hmm. when you were fifteen. You've taken yeah. care of all of her medical bills ever since you were fifteen. Yeah. Dad and I haven't had to do any of it. Yeah. She's been your responsibility, and you've done mm -hmm. such an amazing um, job taking care of her. So. so I don't know if I shared the story before, but I think maybe end with if you're still watching, <laughs> end with a happier story. When I first brought her home, she was a little older, just a smidge older than the normal puppies that we had brought home when I was a child, like really young. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, she can't jump. She's too young to jump. She, she can just lay in a bed on the floor and I'm going to put my blankets and pillows on the floor right next to the dog bed. <laughs> so I crawl in, go to bed. I'm like, okay, we're going to go to bed. And she looks at me like I am crazy. <laughs> and then she walks away from me and jumps up on the bed and is like, this is my bed. <laughs> so I got to sleep in the bed with her that first night instead of on the yeah. floor. She's a little acrobat. Yeah. She so. she has been able to jump up on everything and has never really stopped. And there's not a person that and she meets that she doesn't love. Mm -hmm. Every time we take her for a walk or anything, yeah. she is such a people person. She's you can a very tell happy dog. Um, the people that took care of her and her litter absolutely loved her as well. Yeah. Um, that we adopted her from yeah. and she was still only like what four months four months old yeah. when I got her but yeah. she she was capable of so much yeah. even from the beginning yeah. so, so that that's my happy Abby story yeah also um, when she was still under a year old I was taking her for a walk in our neighborhood and one of the houses had a um, blow up abominable snowman and it freaked her out. She just started barking at <laughs> the abominable snowman. So I'm looking at her. She knows yeah. you're talking about her. You know her. what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. But we will keep you updated um, yeah. as, as to how her surgery goes. She, mm -hmm. We have found a few more nodules. Which we're going to have looked at because they could just be skin tags or it might be something they want to take off yeah. during surgery. Yeah. So we figured as long as they have her under, they can check those other spots. And, yeah. and if it's spread, then they can let us know what the prognosis yeah. is. But um, yeah. thank you so much if you've stuck with us this far. We know it's yes. been a long one. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a lot to talk about. We thank you so much for being here with us yep. and have a blessed Advent.